Hey, it's Drew Vlight again. We're back in the crew. This time we're going to be taking a look at some classic American muscle cars. People either love them, they hate them, but most people can at least respect where they came from and what they did for the car industry as a whole. I know my personal favorite has got to be the Chevys. I'm a huge fan of Camaros. But you also have your Dodges, your Fords. Trying to think of what else they have represented in game. There's Pontiac as well, but of course they're not an existent in game. And a few other smaller stuff, but mostly it's going to be your Chevys, your Fords, your Dodges. So we'll get in, take a look at what kinds of muscle cars we have here in the game, and uh, take a few of them out for a spin. First up here, we've got, like I said, my one of my personal favorites is the uh, Camaro. I actually prefer the third gen Camaros over the first gen here. They're uh, some people would argue if they're considered a classic at this point because you got the first and seconds in there. I think they are. It's a personal preference thing. I wish they were in game. I have seen a few games where they've made an appearance now, but for the most part, your American muscle cars are hulking monsters back when cars were actually made with steel body panels and things. They have huge, monstrous V8 engines. Some of them even fall into the, the big block category, or at least the customized ones do. The um, engines back then were made out of cast iron. So, I mean, the, the actual cars were like tanks. They, they do weigh a ton, and it really hinders their cornering. But at the same time, the amount of sheer horsepower that they could produce gave most of them just insane acceleration. And they do have some of the best engine noises you'll find in a car. At least from my perspective. Now a lot of them look dated by today's standards. And there are more modern versions of them. We're going to keep those for a uh, separate list. Right now we're just mainly focusing on the, the classic ones. So as I said here, we got our 69 Camaro. Which would be excellent in this game at drag racing. Even has a uh, parachute and roll bars on here. Despite the fact that for some strange unknown reason, Ubisoft hasn't given any of the classic muscle cars drag specs yet. It's just very odd. But to give equal time, we'll hop over here and check out a Chevy. So we got to be fair to everyone. Everybody knows my bias for the uh, Camaro, so... For Chevy, we have the, the ultimate classic, the Shelby GT500. I think this is the only classic uh, Mustang we got. I love the fact that they did take the time and effort to make the uh, superchargers actually work on these cars. At least look like they do. This car should be familiar to anyone who is familiar with Gone in 60 Seconds. Whether it be the original or the Nicolas Cage one. You should still recognize the car, Eleanor. And again, she suffers from the same problems as all muscle cars. Massive, powerful engine. Extremely heavy body. Lots of horsepower. So they tend to break the tires loose because of that uh, horsepower. Which can be fun. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I love that aspect of the cars. In a straight line, they should be amazing. And sadly, the game has... Uh, nerf them down somewhat. Around corners, not so much due to their weight. 
they did a good job of making cars feel that way though you can really feel that these car these are heavy cars when you're driving them and that's a good thing that's the way they should be but you can really see why versus more modern cars and things these can't hold up onto what we consider street racing nowadays Due to that weight, the horsepower compensates for it some, but there's nothing preventing you from putting big horsepower into one of the more modern cars as well. GT500 just has a look to it that everybody can recognize, too. Next time we'll hop over to the uh, Dodge aspect, if I can find it in the list here. There we go. We got our 69 Dodge Charger. I think all my performance specs of my muscle cars have superchargers, because why not? When these cars were released, though, I mean, they were great for their time. Fast cars, great engine noise, and just really nice cars. I mean, they're very functional, very simple on the inside. On that fancy stuff, you had your gauges. And that was pretty much it. If you were the lucky ones, you got a radio in there, which you could barely hear over top of the engine noise, especially on the highway. And one of the... Uh, the real big selling points of these cars, especially when they were new, was that anybody could work on them. It's not like today where you need all these fancy computers and specialized gadgets and things to work on them. Anybody with a basic tool set could pop open the hood and tinker with them and, and work on their own cars. The days of carburetors and all that fun stuff. Now we're electronic fuel management. Everything's computerized. Don't get me wrong, nowadays the computer stuff is more efficient. There was a long period of time where the older stuff was still better. The newer stuff was just cooler, but it's not really the case anymore. I mean, even manual transmissions are kind of a thing of the past, as the new automatics are so much more efficient. Not nearly as fun to drive, but they're much more efficient to the point where a lot of race cars and things have automatics now because it's just easier it's one less thing the driver has to worry about it'll we'll never replace the the fun of driving these old classics there's a car show that goes on here every now and then all these guys break out their old classics that have been restored and you get to see these monster cars and all their glory and to actually hear that uh engine in person and get to feel the uh, the rumble of those motors that's really where the fun of driving these kind of cars comes in sadly the game doesn't do it too much justice in that aspect they sound okay but you don't get that feeling you can literally feel the the bass note and the rumble the popping of the exhaust sure you can hear it. But we also got ourselves another um, Chevy. I can find it. Can't find it. Oh, it's in here. I must have gone by it to get to that. There we go. Another truly classic here. And all of them had 
similar engine build, similar styling back in the day. They were made to go fast in a straight line. And do that they do. I kept going that way. Cornering is a completely different story. Though I have seen some great guys take some of these cars, remodel them, and rebuild them with some excellent parts and really turn them into amazing machines, more than they originally were. But at the same time, the majority just standard stock of these and this really rolly suspension combined with that heavy weight. They weren't made to go around corners. They were made to go straight. And it shows. Doesn't make them any less fun to drive, though. They've also got some nice weight to them for if you're doing something in-game, like a police chase. You can really do some damage with one of these if you wanted to. By today's standards in cars, even the massive horsepower numbers they used to put out in their time seem small. And combined with the uh, heavy weights of the cars and things, just not, not what they used to be. But you can still appreciate them. Sadly, the game lacks any... Oh, it is asphalt. It looked like dirt for a minute there. I was kind of worried. The rain is not helping, though. Sadly, the game's lacking any Pontiacs at all, so we don't get any GTO or any of that stuff to toy with. Maybe we'll get them someday. The fact that Pontiac's out of business right now kind of makes licensing an issue, I'm sure. But, uh, would be nice to see him add some more of the, the well-known ones. I'd like to see a Roadrunner. Things like that. I do not have the classic Corvette that's in the game, so I can't show you that one. Still debating on if it's worth investing the money to buy the uh, season pass to get access to those cars. I've been winning a lot of CC at events lately, so I may just go buy specific ones, but it'd be nicer to get them in a whole pack if I could. That was a bad accident. Wet roads also do not play well with these cars because of their high horsepower and heavy nature. The back ends of them really like to kick out under cornering. And I just can't drive. That has a lot to do with it too, so. Again, these would make some excellent uh, drag cars if Ubisoft ever gets around to making drag specs for them. That would be a lot of fun. Not sure why they haven't. It's kind of annoying at this point, but... And I've got to... Uh, got to mention this one. I'm going to take a lot of heat for forgetting about it almost. But the... Uh, hot Rod. Probably the true original definition of American muscle. I did not mention when talking about retro American muscle cars. And uh, definitely deserves to be mentioned. The fact that it has so many specs makes it a really cool car. And it's just all around a decent car. They're fast, they're agile, they have great acceleration. And they come in a lot of specs. It's really fun to tool around in one of these in uh, dirt spec. They handle pretty well, too. Probably their, their biggest drawback is the interior view. A lot of them were chop tops where they tried to make them as low profile as possible. And in doing so, it gave you a severely limited view. Kind of reminds me a lot of the new, more modern Camaros. That's going to hurt.
But yeah, I'm, can't believe I almost missed adding them. Wow, that was terrible. They are a blast to drive. This is really unlevel. I thought it would be more levels than that. Let's try, try to do some donuts. But yeah, they're a fun little car to drive. They have a lot of specs. And pretty much are the reason American Muscle exists. There's a ton of different models and things of these in real life. Mostly based on 1930s chassis. I want to say it was a 32 Chevy. A lot of them are based on, but... But, uh... So many customized versions and things scratch build after that. When a game even comes from building a bunch of parts you find throughout the map, putting them all together. Definitely deserves a spot on this list though, and I'm sure I'm going to take heat from people for almost forgetting it, but I didn't. And uh, needed to make sure it got a spot on here. Anyway, it's pretty much going to wrap it up for our, our look at the uh, classic muscle cars here, for the American side of things anyway. Which one's your favorite? What do you like to drive around, cruise around in? I would love to get together a bunch of uh, fans or whatever and do like a cross-country run of everybody in muscle cars. Maybe in street spec, so we can do some customization to them, but they're not overly fast. And uh, just drive cross country with a bunch of guys. That'd be a blast. But uh, yeah, let me know in the comments what your favorite uh, muscle car is for the classic American muscle. I'm going to be doing a separate one for the more modern American muscle cars here. And then, uh, yeah, let me know if there's any other kind of videos like these you'd like to see. And uh, as always, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.